guys, what's up? Welcome back to the DIY Designer. Uh, for those of you guys that are new, hi, my name is Orly, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. And for those of you that aren't new, Hey guys, how you doing this week? I hope that you're doing much better. Uh, I am doing much better. I feel like I'm clicking into some kind of like quarantine vibe and, uh, and I'm feeling better. My spirits are high, so that is good. Today's DIY is really fun and I'm so stoked that you're here for it. I'm doing a denim jacket DIY. Now, the original inspo for this was all these really cool like mixed denim jackets. They're almost like Frankenstein. It's like two or three jackets that have been chopped up and I'm using one part from this one and one part from this one and mixing them together. And while they're really fun, they're a little trendy. Like I feel like maybe in a year, I'm not gonna want something quite this intense. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the inspiration from that mixed denim, but I'm doing a really simple version of it. I'm taking a pair of men's jeans and some extra denim scrap that I have to create brand new, big, oversized sleeves with this cool, like exaggerated cuff. And I'm finishing off all the details with darker pieces of denim. While it is on trend, it's not trendy. It kind of just gives me that vibe where I feel like I can wear this jacket forever. For those of you that are not subscribed, hopefully at some point in this video, you will be inspired to do so. And make sure that you click that bell so you actually get notifications when new videos are out. All right, let's get right into it. Material. All right, let's get started. So this is not my jean jacket, but this is a basic jean jacket, very similar to what you guys are probably gonna be using. Now you'll see mine is already cropped. If you wanna crop yours like mine, you're just gonna cut it basically in the middle of those two pockets. That's where mine was cropped. So just grab your fabric scissors, cut straight across. You can always draw a line if you want, however you wanna do that, and then wash it so it frays. The next thing is we're gonna remove the sleeves, but you don't wanna cut them because we want that seam allowance. So you're actually gonna seam rip open these two stitches that go all all the way around. By seam ripping them open, not only do we get the seam allowance on the inside, but we get the full size of our pattern for our sleeve to reuse. Now here is my jacket. This was a jacket that already had flannel sleeves put in and was already cropped, but that's the one that I wanted to use. So I'm seam ripping open my sleeves. The beginning takes a second, but then once you get a little hole, it's much easier because you can kind of pull at the seam while you're using the razor. Just take your time, get in there, seam rip open, pull everything apart until the sleeve pops off. Now save the sleeve because this will become our pattern for our new sleeves, which we're making out of jeans. So grab your jeans, the men's jeans that you're planning on using, and that sort of bubbly inseam there, I wanna use that. I wanna make that part of my sleeve. So fold your pant in half and make sure to just decide which seams you wanna keep and which ones you wanna get rid of. Like I said, I wanna keep that inseam. And so basically what I'm doing is figuring out my length. Now I want my sleeve to be much longer than the old sleeve. So what I'm doing is I'm sliding the top part of my sleeve up up to the 25 inch mark, which is the length I've decided to give myself. Then I just scoot the fabric over to the fold because again, that is the seam that I'm keeping and I'm gonna cut the excess off the other side. So right now I'm following the line of the armhole and right here I'm putting a pin in. This is basically my mark for where I'm gonna cut, including my seam allowance. So as you can see, that gives me about a three quarter inch seam allowance. So when I sew it up, the pant leg will have the same armhole opening as my old flannel shirt. So it will fit in perfectly. So I'm just cutting off the excess, but when I get to the bottom, I stop just shy of it. And that's because I'm actually gonna sew right into the existing seam line. I'm gonna merge right into that old line. That way there's no uh, seam on the bottom. It just looks like it goes right into the existing pant leg. In order to do that, you need it to lay flat. So just cut the old seam allowance and release it from the hem. That way it's like free to toggle back and forth like that. Now I can pinch it, lay it super flat, and when I sew, it'll fall into line much better. Now I also wanted to patch up this hole, so I just cut a piece off of my old jeans, laid it on, and pinned it into place. And when you sew it, you're gonna sew it from the top. So lay it down and look at the hole on your jeans. You're gonna sew it, as close to the fringed edge of your hole as possible without actually sewing down any of the fringe. You kind of want your stitch line to sort of like disappear amongst all that little frayed edges without tacking any of it down. Now, when you cut free the excess, you basically created for yourself like a perfectly sized shaped patch right there. So because my jacket sleeve is pretty loose, a simple straight stitch will work. If you're doing this on a pair of jeans that are tight jeans and you're patching up a hole, you're gonna really wanna reinforce that. 
So now I'm sewing closed that sleeve. Now this is what we were talking about. A simple seam allowance, three quarter inch seam allowance, but as we work our way down, we're gonna merge right back into that old side seam. So just keep with your seam allowance and slowly start to veer off until you go right into that old seam until it basically just disappears. That way when you look at the cuff of your jacket, you're just gonna see the original hem of your jeans. You're not gonna see any cutting or any disruption. You can see it's perfect. Now I'm using this sleeve as a guide for my second one and I'm making sure to lay them face to face. That way I actually mirror the sleeve pattern because I wanna make sure that the slightly distressed um, like effect that the front of my jeans have is on the same side of my sleeves. I don't want it to be on the front of one sleeve and the back of the other. So just make sure to make those adjustments. Now I'm cutting it out, following the line and doing the same thing when I get to that bottom. I'm sort of maintaining the last four inches of the hem of my pants. That way, again, it goes seamless into the sleeve, into the cuff. You wanna cut, you know, free that little side so it can lay flat and toggle, open up peanut butter for your son and leave the cap on the table because, you know, why not? Okay, so now it's time to sew in the sleeves. We're gonna do them face to face. So I'm pointing to not only that side seam, but also the outer part of my denim to the outer part of my jacket. You're gonna line them up. So you can see I'm pinning together, right sides together, outsides together, and I pin them starting with that little side seam. That was the one that I wanted to keep, right? So I pin that first. Then I move up to my shoulder. I grab the shoulder seam. This was what we actually adjusted the shape and the size of our sleeve. So you take that to the shoulder and pin that in place. Now kind of move and find your next middle. Pin that, and then you just sort of evenly distribute the excess all the way around. The sleeve has a little bit of ease, so you want to use your fingers to evenly distribute that and just use a ton of pins. Because this is round, you really want to make sure to pin it over and over so that it's going to be nice and even and lay really flat on your arm. Now you are going to sew this all the way around. The easiest way to sew it is to take your hand, put it inside your sleeve, and now pull your sleeve right side so it's not inside out anymore. Pull it inside, and what you'll see is you end up with everything laying flat like that, right? So our sleeve is now like inside our jacket, it's no longer inside out, and it gives us a nice clean line. Now I am going to sew, again, with the seam allowance that was originally on my jacket. So you see that line right there? That indent is there because that was from the old seam allowance. So I'm just following that line. By doing that, not only does it make it easier because obviously it was designed that way, but all of the old fading and distressing that happened on those seams will still be there. I'm not gonna lose them at all. So it's gonna look like it was always designed this way. And you can see there, see a little bit of that like natural fading along those seams. If we would have adjusted that seam allowance, we would have lost all that goodness. All right, so now we're gonna press it. This is gonna do two things. One is it's gonna start to allow our jacket to kind of function as one piece as opposed to a bunch of different pieces that have been sewn together. So that's one thing. The next is that you wanna actually reach your hand into the jacket and pull that seam allowance, that seam that you created towards you, away from the sleeve and towards the middle of the jacket and press it because we're gonna top stitch it down. And so by ironing it in one direction, it's gonna make it a lot easier to sew. So you can see I'm reaching in, I'm kind of pulling it towards me and then I'm pressing it down into place. You also wanna make sure to press that fresh seam that you made so that it's not like bubbly. You want it to lay flat, press it from both sides, inside and out. Now I'm just swapping out my thread for that sort of golden thread that's always on denim. Find the closest match you can get and now you see that double seam there? The old shadow is there from the original one. We're gonna follow that line. This is again doing two things. One, it's tacking down that seam allowance on the inside of our jacket and laying it flat. The other is it's giving that finished look that denim always has. By sewing this and doing the double hem, you're doing it all the way around, then you move over and you do the other, you'll see it really looks like the existing stitch. So it's a perfect match. It lays flat. We've got all the old distressing of it. It really makes it look, again, like the jacket was always designed like this. You just don't want to give away that it's all these fresh new seams. It looks perfect, actually. I tried it on and I gotta say guys, when I cuffed the sleeves, I was completely in love with it. It looks so cool. It really looks like, you know, like pants that are cuffed. Only problem is that that's what you're seeing on the outside. You're seeing that sort of zigzag stitch. And if you have an overlock machine, that's what you're gonna see. I just don't like it. So I ended up having an idea that turned out to be one of my favorite elements of this whole jacket. So what I did is I took a piece of denim and I just sort of pressed the edges so that it would be clean finished. Folded in half and cut it because I made one that was long enough for both sides. And now I'm pinning 
pushing it into that side seam. Obviously you can see there, that's my sleeve. It's flipped inside out and I'm tucking that little piece into the hem. I want it to look like it's actually coming out of the hem. Because these are jeans and I can't completely turn it around, I just went up the side and across the top, double backed, and then I just took my jeans off, moved over, and then did my other side there, came up the side and met where I finished off. Now, the only thing I didn't sew was that little bottom, the opening. I didn't wanna see a stitch. I was like, maybe I'll hand sew it. I ended up just taking a little fabric glue, and I'm sorry, I pull it out of frame for a second there, but basically, I did a super thin line of fabric glue and then used my fingernail to like push it in and kind of hide it in that seam so it looks like it's coming right out of it. And now you can see when I cuff my sleeve, Look at how cool that looks. Like this, by the way, would be a really cool detail to do on jeans. Like on your actual jeans, you could add a different uh, pattern, a fabric, anything you want, but it adds such a cool detail. Now this little patch that I did, I left it raw, but I don't want it to fray. So a cool hack is just to use a super thin line of fabric glue, use your finger and sort of rub it across the edge. This will prevent any fraying from happening, but it also like, you don't have to bother sewing it. It will just stay crisp and raw, fresh cut like that, and it'll never fray. You guys, we're done. All right, guys, that's it. It is such a fun project. I can't wait for you to see this one on. It is so, 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 so cool. You can wear it with a million different things. I'm gonna go outside and model this bad boy. Uh, my brother will be filming it six feet away from me, per use. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you do, hopefully you subscribe to the channel and click notifications. And for the rest of you, I will see you guys next week. Bye. You won't believe we've had a break, but somewhere there's a light inside of us. It chose to wait Not looking for no, no, no Sugar coated love